the What Are We Doing podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. My name's Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 136. Listen, the designer sunglasses that are on my face cost me $5,000, okay? I spent $5,000 on these sunglasses. We're not messing around anymore. We're in the big leagues now. We've taken it to the next level, people. We're in the next stratosphere. The YouTube channel now has 1,461 subscribers on it. So basically, we're in talks with Netflix for a $100 million deal. We're trying to compete with Mr. Beast and his like Beast games over on Amazon Prime. We're YouTube's next new number one channel. So right here, uh, it's the wad pod. It's the wad pod and we're on our way. We're like days, if not hours, maybe by the end of this episode, we might have surpassed Mr. Beast and his subscriber number. You thought pewds had a lot. We're on our way. We're almost, we're like, it's neck and neck. We're almost like YouTube's number one channel now. So uh, can't thank y'all enough for that. Awesome. Cheers and claps all around for you guys. And uh, that's, that's just basically one of the many reasons we can afford the $8,000 pair of sunglasses, okay? And what I need you to also understand is that JoJo Siwa is a visionary, okay? What she is doing is a once in a lifetime thing. She is inventing and creating art like no one has ever done before her, okay? It is <clears throat> imperative that you get through your thick little head that Jojo Siwa is doing something that no one since the likes of Elvis has ever done before her when it comes to creating music, Jojo Siwa has now revolutionized the planet and has given us an all new genre, okay? And when she told us, when she told her team, when she told the world of this grand idea, all of, some of us, apparently a few people said, wow, that's great, Jojo, you should do it. And the rest of us said, hey, wait, what? But Jojo Siwa has created gay pop and she's the rocketeer. We've got Karma single number one. Guess what? More singles, more songs, the album's coming soon. Jojo Siwa, the pioneer. No one has ever done, not a single gay, queer, lesbian, not a single artist has ever created music or sang or done a concert in front of people or released a single or in a red carpet billboard music interview as a gay pop artist ever before. And so what Jojo Siwa has basically done for not only the music industry, not only for the United States of America and our culture and everything that we consume for entertainment, but for essentially the world has now opened up the door. So anyone who is, 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 is attempting to be, or wants to be, or already identifies within the LGBTQAI plus community, uh, or essentially if you're gay, you can now freely label your music under the gay pop category, thanks to Jojo Siwa, the first of her kind, the revolutionary that we never knew we needed. We didn't know this was coming. We thought we were just getting a single. We thought we were just getting a, a, a flashy outfit from Jojo. We didn't think that she was gonna create a whole new genre of music. Like, can you imagine? We're gonna have Spotify playlists now. We're gonna have gay Spotify playlists, gay pop uh, like awards now. We're gonna have to have different categories of award shows now, all because and thanks to Jojo Siwa 
and the empire that she has created for the queer and LGBTQ plus community. She's created gay pop, like ran about Miley Cyrus all you want, okay? Like it's it's JoJo Siwa is what's happening. And so she's, 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 uh, she's the best. She's, no one's made, no one has made this dramatic of a change. Look, she says it right here. No one has made this dramatic of a change yet. No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. And I am the first in the generation. It is very scary, but someone's got to do it. Hey, no one's made such a dramatic change ever. I'm the revolutionary. She's Donald Trump. That was the worst Donald Trump impression ever, but she sounds like Donald Trump. That last line was exactly something that Donald Trump would say. And it's just this echo narcissism, like the only one, like, sweetheart, you've mentioned 90% of gay pop in all of your past interviews. So then how is it that you can come along and say that you invented it when everyone who actually did are your literal mentor, are your literal, like, you look up to these people. She says in past, present, in interviews, in the past, she said multiple times, Freddie Mercury is one in person she looks up to. Hello? And so, uh, and like, that's where she's getting one of her kids' names. Listen, Megs didn't know. I just dropped the bomb. I dropped the Eddie, Freddie, Teddy bomb on Megs just last night. She said, what's that? I said, oh, those are her kids. She said, what kids? I said, her future kids, Eddie, Freddie, and Teddy. She's already got them picked out. Freddie for Freddie Mercury, Eddie because she likes to show Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and Teddy because she has a teddy bear she can't let go of, just like her future kids. And like she thinks it, it just, oh, that clicks, Eddie, Freddie, and Teddy. And like, I'll get them fake tattooed. Megs didn't know the tattoos were fake either. Megs didn't know that when, when I dropped the bomb and I showed Megs the call her daddy clip with the Eddie, Freddie, and Teddy in the car and crying, it's so annoying, dude. It's just one of the most, it's one of the weirdest PR, like call her daddy interview. Like it's just, and it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. She's already like addressed it. She's already, she already uses the hate and all the negativity to keep going. And of course she will. She's only 20 years old. She's only 20 years old. Like just call, let's like take a step back. Listen, it's, 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 it's blatantly obvious. Like everyone has torn karma apart at this point, by the way, like the writers that actually wrote the song wrote it as a demo for Miley five, six, eight, ten years ago. She didn't want it. The writers of the songs are prominent writers for like 90% of the Disney Channel music. So she's working with writers and artists who, and picking songs from people who work in the children industry. And like, I think her next single is just another song from a TikToker that was released a few years ago. So it's just like, this weird industry plan, like, okay, you're going to be here. You're going to be there. You're going to be here. You're going to be there. And then on this day, we're dropping this. And on this day, we're doing this. And on this day, we're going viral here. And it's just this weird orchestrated rollout of, of, of this, of this album release rebrand weird thing that Jojo C was doing. And I don't know. It just, it doesn't sit right with us anymore. We're I'm tired of the clips. I'm tired of the dancing. I'm tired of the the weird, like her, like cussing on Call Her Daddy, like it's her first time. She's like, oh, I, I, I looked at the calendar and I I got a freaking bust a nut to get this this music out. I got a bust a nut to get this music done. And it's like, you got a what? It's like I got. It's like, it's like I got. I got I got a deadline. I got to freaking toss a salad to get this, this, this website done. I got a freaking man. I got to bat around some balls to get this fucking wedding playlist put together. Like, it's just, 
she like doesn't know how to she wants to be but she can't it's such a strange she's only 20 i don't man it's weird it's i don't get it it's straight and like so I, it's jojo see what we're done with her we're so done we're so done and hey you want to hear a coincidence here's a coincidence put your tinfoil hats on here's something you didn't think about here's something you didn't think about five days ago Jojo Siwa releases karma. How many letters are in the word karma? Five. Five days later, after karma gets released, five letters in karma, O.J. Simpson passes away. Rest in peace, O.J. Simpson. And you know what else? You know what O.J. backward is? Jojo. You know what Jojo backwards is? O.J. Simpson Jojo Siwa killed OJ Simpson because we've already seen reports. Cancer already said he didn't do it. Cancer said they didn't do it. So uh, the only road leads to Jojo Siwa is all I'm saying. Listen, it's uh, it's unfortunate that OJ Simpson uh, has passed away at uh, 70, 76 years old. And of course... You know, it's O.J. Simpson. He's, uh, man, we're going to remember him for for a few things. You know what I mean? He had a he had a great and amazing football career, okay? And, um, and of course, who, who can forget his infamous goat farm? Uh, he was a, he's a famous goat farmer for a while uh, after he retired from, from the NFL. So it's just one of those things that O.J. Simpson is, is here and gone. I'm not entirely sure how he even became a celebrity in the first place, um, but it's it's unfortunate. He did have cancer, uh, and it's uh, it got him. It got him a little early, you know what I mean? No more Twitter world. No more, hello, Twitter world. It's unfortunate. The juice, O.J. Simpson, the famous uh, football player, and goat farmer uh, is just is no longer with us, and so it's uh, it's insane. It's insane. It's unfortunate. It's all over the news. It's crazy. But no, listen. Here's the issue: the O.J. Simpson trials were too. They they weren't the millennials. It wasn't our generation. No one our age. No one I know. My sisters. My Megs. Me. We don't really. We weren't old enough to remember or know anything about the O.J. Simpson trials, what happened, like the virality of it. It was like 1994, right? It was 1994. We were all just little babies at that point. And like our parents were glued to the TV. So I reached out for this one. I reached out to all the parents, you know what I mean? Shout out to the boomers. Thank you for your help on this clip. Your services are no longer needed. We'll text you when we're ready to talk again. You don't need to text or call us. We'll let you know when the ne next time is we need you on this one, but we've got it. Thank you. It's unanimous across the board. Um, everyone we pulled, when I asked them, do you think OJ Simpson did it? Uh, my side of the family's response was absolutely 100%. And uh, Meg's side of the family was like, uh, duh, everyone knows he did it. Just like Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. So they took it, of course, one step further. Yes, dude, yes. One step further for Meg's side of the family. I love it. So basically, that's where we're at on the side of things. I don't know if there's too many people who think, like, you know what I mean? Rest in peace, Nicole. But here's... Shout out to Brad Miller comedy. OJ can now rest peacefully knowing that his wife's killer is finally dead. And so uh, it's it's getting crazy out there, man. And so unfortunately, rest in peace, OJ Simpson. And of course, we can't do it without the Kardashians being involved because that's how this guy rocketed to fame in the first place. And so, of course, Chloe's getting flooded because that's the second conspiracy of the day. Is she or isn't she the alleged love child of O.J. Simpson? The rumors are 
uh, that uh, that Chloe is his daughter, but they hid it from the media for whatever reason. Speculation, I don't know. Chris, Bruce, back then, it was weird. It just gets a little, you know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, has anyone checked in on Chloe Kardashian? She must be devastated about her dad, one snarky ex-user wrote, while another said they would be praying for the good American founder during the difficult time. While the former stepfather, Caitlyn Jenner, harshly tweeted, dude, Chris Jenner, Caitlyn, I'm so sorry. I, I apologize for calling him Chris. Caitlyn, no, no, Chris, I'm getting them all fucking, I get the Kardashians so confused. There's Jenners, there's, there's, there's Chris, there's Caitlyn. Caitlyn Jenner tweeted, good riddance. Caitlyn Jenner said, good riddance. Oh, oh. Caitlyn Jenner, as she's flying her private plane over Malibu with her smoking hot girlfriend in the back, tweeting good riddance. Hey, all I have to say is Caitlyn Jenner's girlfriend, partner, fiance, Mary, I'm not, I'm not sure what their current status is. She has no business being that hot. And second of all, the fact that Caitlyn Jenner is 100% against gay marriage and is dating and with a smoking bomb shot. It's such a convoluted situation, but I guarantee you she was flying her plane right over Hollywood Hills as she tweets good riddance yesterday, finding out that OJ Simpson has passed away. Oh, what? What a, what a tweet. What a tweet to end all be all tweets. It when, listen, I mean, I'm all about having enemies. I'm all about holding grudges or if it is, let it go, boo. But like when a man dies of cancer, now I, you know, hey, was he a murderer? You know what I mean? Did he uh, kill his wife and her best friend? Yeah. The jury, this is the jury ever messed up. When is the jury ever really messed up? I mean, can you name a, when the jury, did they met? It just, you know what I mean? So whether acquitted or maybe it was Nicole, I don't know. But all the people we've talked to have 100% said that it was probably a mistake made on the court's end. And so, <laughs> oh man, uh, Kardashian is the youngest of the child of Kris Jenner and the late attorney Robert Kardashian, who famously defended uh, O.J. Simpson during the 1995 murder trial. Uh, Chloe was only nine years old when Simpson was arrested on suspicion of murder, uh, murdering his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. In 2009, uh, during an E! True Hollywood story, Chloe said she used to refer to Simpson as Uncle O.J., and Brown as Auntie Nicole. Jenner was so close to Brown that following her death, she paid homage to her pal by giving uh, daughter Kendall Jenner her middle name, Nicole. So close, close family ties. Interesting, intertwine. Who knows? Rumors and speculations are on like his deathbed, OJ might have recorded one last Twitter video. There's rumors speculating on TikTok that, you know, you, you kind of know when, when, when you have these diseases and the things feel off and you kind of can tell when it's coming. There's potentially a video that might get released now that he's dead. There might be one last Twitter upload and we might get one last confession from OJ Simpson. That's the conspiracy. I don't know. Be on the lookout for that. If it does, if that drops, dude, if an OJ confession video drops on Twitter after he's gone, instant, instant move, of the instant move of the year, instant win for everyone involved of the year. If you saw last episode, uh, it was kind of the beginning slash middle of this whole 2024 rap beef album feature collab Avengers Thanos like battle civil war within the rap community situation that Carlos and I kind of broke down last week, right? Uh, it all started with J. Cole 
and Drake, and then Kendrick dropped a verse dissing the two. Then J. Cole responded. Then J. Cole apologized to Kendrick, essentially taking his side, you know what I mean? Or, you know, removing that diss from the playing field. So J. Cole's pretty much now out. So now it's Kendrick versus Drake. And wouldn't you know it, we get like a part two a we still don't trust you from Future and Metro Boomin. And if it is not, if it is not blatantly clear that they are forming what it can only be described, shout out to Twitter, I found it on there, what can only be described as the Avengers of the rap game, okay? And Drake just became Thanos. And so far on the Avengers side, we've got Future, Metro Boomin, we've now got J. Cole because he bowed down and apologized and theoretically switched sides because he's on the part two, we still don't trust you album. And so it's it's a little confusing where J. Cole stands. We're gonna assume he's now most likely a part of the good guys. Then we've got Kendrick Lamar, of course. Now on this project, we've got Travis Scott. Now we've got The Weeknd taking jabs at Drake. We've got Travis Scott taking jabs at Drake's baby mama, like claiming he was there first. Like it's just now getting messy. And so we've got the Avengers forming. And what's, but what people are forgetting is at this point, Drake already has all of his infinity stones. Okay, now listen. I fell off. I fell off on the Avengers movies due to the fact that I'm 30 years old and I have a life and I don't really have time or can justify the time or actions that it would take for me to give 540 hours plus of TV, movies, comic books, and other media that like I need to consume to fully understand what's going on in the MCU at any given time. Not like it was 10 years ago when you could just go watch Iron Man 2 and you remembered what happened in the first Iron Man and that's all you needed to know. And so, um, but what I do know is at one point in the story, Thanos comes along and snaps his uh, motherfucking fingers. And so um, what uh, Future and Metro are doing, essentially Captain America and Iron Man didn't realize is that Drake was already the goat and he had the Xfinity stones, Xfinity, <laughs> Xfinity, get your Xfinity internet today. He already had the infinity stones ready to go. And as soon as he's ready, he's going to snap his fingers and half the rap game is going to be done. All he needs is two lines for each rapper and it's covered in a verse and it's done. It's over for half of you. So for the half that thought that they were safe because you chose that side, it's probably, listen, we've got it on good accounts that like Joe Budden and other people in the industry have been talking and apparently both sides have gone into the booth and both sides have come out. Drake's ready to go. Kendrick's ready to go. It's all a matter of when it drops and how it drops and when we find it and how the internet takes it. And then we see what happens. This is a continued story now because we now have more people involved. We have more drops to go. Drake still hasn't responded. And we've got six more t artists added to the other side of the team. Now with features from everybody else and it's getting insane. And so I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what Drake's gonna do. But uh, I know one thing though, bitches, they come, they go. Saturday through Sunday, Monday. Sunday through Monday, ho. And it's like, maybe I'll love you one day. Maybe we'll one day grow. And so, um, but basically Joe Budden says it's gonna be nuclear. And so I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Seeing the reactions, seeing the drops, hearing the lines, figuring it out, making it all make sense. This is like one of the most exciting. I've had so many conversations about this with so many people. It's such a hot topic. The 2024 rap beep, Drake needs to drop. Where's Drake? 
Hey, have you seen him? Where is he? Is he over? Where's Dre? Is he in the booth? Is he ready? Can he hit publish, please? Like, let's go. Why are we waiting? I get it. It's Friday. Everyone else is dropping. We've got actual albums to go. Drake would do it nonchalant, maybe at like midnight or something, maybe this weekend. Who knows? But it needs to, man, what a roller coaster of a rap beef. Kendrick, J. Cole, Future, Metro. It's all getting a little insane. A little insane, if you ask me. Uh, all right, here's another quick, quick review, quick reaction video, quick, just like if, if you're, if you, if you need a recommendation, here's the video recommendation of the week. I don't do this often, uh, just because I know not a lot of people have the same taste as me. And like, you know, some people and the people that get interviewed and stuff. Like, so, but this episode of hot ones has got to now be the top. It is the peak. It is the epitome. It was Gordon Ramsay, potentially DJ Khaled, just because of who they both are. But this is now the epitome of the show Hot Ones on YouTube. If you know, you know, but essentially Hot Ones, Sean Evans, First We Feast, you got 10 hot wings that get progressively hotter as you go. He's interviewing celebrities, artists, musicians, YouTubers, TikTokers, you name it. Ice Spice, DJ Khaled, Gordon Ramsay, freaking this week was Conan. None other, Redhead, TBS, The Conan Show, Conan Needs a Friend podcast, comedian, late night show, TV host, Conan was on the season finale of Hot Ones. And when I tell you that every single minute, Every single question, every wing, every second, every bit, every action of this video, of this episode is worth watching, okay? Just when you think it's going to stop, just when you think you know what's coming next, just when you think it can't get any better, just when you think the end is near, just when you think you know what's about to happen, the opposite happens, the bit hits, the punchline lands, and you are laughing out loud hysterically. If you are a fan of comedy, if you are a fan of stand-up comedy, if you are a fan of laughing, if you are a fan of watching something and laughing out loud and not expecting it, you need to watch the latest episode of Hot Ones with Conan and Sean Evans. It is one of the funniest things that we have seen in a very long time. When it comes to improv or sketch, bit, comedy, I don't even know what you want to call what he did, but I am calling it a comical masterpiece. What Conan started off doing in this episode all the way to the very end from the speeches, the rants, the, the, the reactions, the, 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 the oversaturate, the just over the top, the wings, the bones in the pocket, the whole, the doctor, the whole thing is a comical masterclass. And if you want to learn anything, about comedy or how to control a room or how to take control of any situation or how to stand out or how to even create a viral moment, you need to study the final episode uh, that they just released of Hot Ones. It's not going to get better than this. Whatever guest, whatever you can imagine, whatever celebrity, whatever Gordon Ramsay, DJ Khaled, whatever artist, whatever you think might be able to top what just happened on Hot Ones, it won't. It won't. It's, it, I literally found myself, uh, this last few seasons of Hot Ones, I'll just be honest, my ADHD gets in the way, 
you know, the, the, the interviews are going okay. It's just them talking. It's just the back and forth. There's not too much entertainment value. They get a little bit, oh, that's a hot one. And they have some reaction and that's backed by sound effects and just clever editing. And it's just, you know, that's fine. And like, so I find myself not watching them in full. And so, but the Conan episode, I, I, I found myself at one point in time, maybe straying away but I was instantly pulled back and I watched it from A to Z. I couldn't stop. I could not take my eyes off the screen. The entire 20, I think it was 20 plus minutes, the entire episode is probably hands down one of the best pieces of content that we have gotten so far this year. I don't know how, what kind of award that we can give this content. I don't know what kind of attribute, like uh, just, give it a like, give it a view, give it a share. If you don't do anything on my episode this week, but you know, give this episode a like, a, a share and a comment and like, you know, put, tell your friends about it. But like when you're done that, go watch this hot ones episode and just blow it through the roof. It's already hit Twitter. Twitter's already got a hold of it. It's already become one of the most talked about episodes I think of hot ones in a very long time. And it's, it's all thanks to Conan. He's, uh, he's promoting his new show. It's a four episode mini series on HBO max. He even like, he even takes stabs at HBO max. He's like, it was HBO, but that was too popular. So they changed it to max, which is stupid. Like he calls it stupid. It's so out of pocket. It's so off the wall. It's so Conan. It's so Conan and he deserves every ounce of success. I can't wait to watch the show. Uh, comes out on his birthday. What a coincidence. The executives at HBO don't care. They just, they pick the date. It's fine. It's his birthday. I think April 18th. Check it out on Max. I'm going to try to get it. I'm going to try to watch it. It's going to be, it's just him, I think, exploring the world. Exploring different cultures, exploring different, uh, like India and different things that they do over there and just having fun and being funny and like trying on different outfits and dressing up, doing different bits and just doing what Conan does, uh, but going different places. And so it's wow. What a, what a promo. That's how you promote a show. That's how you promote a movie. That's exactly how you do a promotion. Dakota Johnson. Like you can't, you can't go into, you can't go into interviews and sit and say, oh yeah, I don't really know anything about the movie that I just filmed. I haven't seen it and I don't really care to talk about it. Like, okay, great. But when you do something like Conan, oh man, the hot ones interview, I got Paul watching. I have, I have everyone. If you want to laugh, if you want to have a good time, you need to watch the hot ones interview. You know who needs to probably just sit down and watch it? is Gypsy frickin' Rose because she's been wilding out since she got out, dude, okay? Gypsy Rose has been on a rampage. I've had her on the list to talk about for the last two episodes, but her story keeps getting crazier and crazier and crazier on this week's episode of the Trailer Park Kardashians. Gypsy Rose is doing everything in her power to be Kim Carter, you can see it, you can feel it. She thinks that this lifestyle documentary, the cameras, the TMZ coverage, this is equal to Kim Kardashian. The same way that Jojo Siwa thinks that what she's doing is equal to Miley Cyrus, Gypsy Rose equals Kim Kardashian. They're both, uh, listen, I didn't do math. I didn't do math. I was busy buying my math teacher a Snuggie in high school, okay? I was flirting. I wasn't doing algebra. I didn't go to the advanced math class. When I was a senior in high school, I took probability for my math class. And that consisted of the teacher going, here's a deck of cards, learn probability. Other than that, I don't care what you do. You're seniors, you're getting out of here in a week anyways. And so it was pretty much just free time. I didn't learn math but I'm pretty sure Gypsy Rose is not equal to the Kardashians, but she's treating it like it is because as soon as she got out, right, we heard, we all heard the news, the separation of Ryan, okay? 
We knew it was coming. If we, if you watch the documentary, there's clips. We knew it was coming. You know what I mean? We heard, we all saw it. Ask Ryan, I have always had a difficulty letting go of my ex-fiance, Ken. I had a dream about my ex, and in that dream, I left you for my ex. Oh, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Answer the question. Didn't I see you three weeks ago? It makes you a Hey, you know what? At least there's a silver lining. Gypsy, at least dreams really do come true. And that, I think, is the positive. That's the lesson we all need to learn here. If it's not for anything else, the lesson that we all need to take away from even just that is that dreams really do come true. And if you believe something wholeheartedly, by God, you'll get it. You'll get it eventually. You'll get it, trust me. You'll get it eventually. And like, there were all these red flags. And Ryan, you know what I mean? Ryan, poor Ryan, sweetheart. He, listen, he's just, he's on, he was on the ride. He was on the ride with her. He thought there was nothing that was gonna bring them down as long as he supported her wholeheartedly to the point where she continued she continued, even after the jailbreak, she continued to talk about this man, this ex. The that she day had. that I got out of prison, Ken texted my stepmom yeah, and was like, like, hey, no. what's up? And Stop. she told, yeah, she told me about Stop. it. And around. I'm like, oh, so now he wants to come around. Yeah. And so I told Ryan about it. I was yeah. open and I'm like, you know, he's sniffing around. It, all the signs were right there. We're right there. And so we've got the separation and literally seven, if not 72 hours after the announcement of Gypsy Rose and her husband, Ryan are splitting up. She went back to the parents' house to live there for a little bit. She's caught out getting matching tattoos with the ex that she's dreaming about. Now don't get it twisted. A lot of people are confused. He's not the ex that killed her mom. He's, He's, uh, he's not, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's in jail. This is a different ex. This was like the one right before Ryan. He was there for her. They had this unconditional bond to the point where they're getting matching Husky tattoos because Huskies are loyal to one another. They're the most loyalist dog on the planet. So what did they do? They went and got matching Husky tattoos because those two will always be loyal to each other. And so, you know what I mean? Listen, you can get matching tattoos with someone and suck them off in the parking lot all you want. But when you get on TikTok live and deny that there's nothing going on between the two of you, okay, not gonna believe you. Okay, hey, not gonna believe you. Okay, not gonna believe you. And so, you know what I mean? And then like, so then once we're done getting the matching shitty Husky tattoos, we got to head down to the Dollar General, get some groceries, get some supplies. Once we're done checking out, we're going to smoke a cigarette. You know what I mean? We're smoking cigarettes outside of the Dollar Gen. Like you can't get any trash. You can't get any trash here. It's so bad. Like, like having TMZ take photos of you smoking cigarettes outside of a Dollar General is honestly a level of stardom I kind of wish I had. Like at the very least, at the very least, I wish I had someone watching me at all times outside of my local Dollar General. So every time I go in, they're like, oh, what's Levi doing again? But no, like who? we would all die. We would all strive for that type of attention, but it's the most heinous thing. So then of course, <clears throat> what do Kardashians do next? What do Kardashians do? Uh, they don't really like their appearance all that much. We've just got a shit ton of money laying around. Let's get some plastic surgery. So of course, Gypsy Rose spins up the contacts that you know she's got from her Hollywood insider friends, and now she's gotten the nose job, babes. We got the nose done. We're fixing the face a little bit. We're probably going for a tummy tuck next. We'll probably get the titties lifted. And you know what? While we're at it, let's fix the teeth. And we're going to be a whole new woman for a whole new man, right? You can't be the old gypsy. 
And that's the thing, folks. That's the thing. She's been under control her entire life. She was under control with her mother. She was under control of the prison guards in prison. She was under control of a husband as soon as she got out of prison with a camera crew. And so now, now she's free. Now she's free as a bird and she's getting tattoos. She's getting nose jobs. She's getting all the things in the world. And of course, now, now, the next day, the very, very next day, this is the week of Gypsy. Every day, something new is happening. Tuesday, she got matching tattoos with her ex-boyfriend. Wednesday, they went to the dollar store together and smoked cigarettes outside of it. Thursday, she got a nose job. And now Friday, she's filing for marital support against Ryan. And so she says, and I quote, Ryan can afford it. So in the divorce that is now officially filed, went from separation to a divorce, Gypsy Rose has essentially asking Ryan for money to support herself after the marriage. The man who doesn't have a show about him, the man who doesn't get book deals, the man who's not going to get the Netflix deal after the Lifetime doc drops, the man who is now no longer with you should not have to give the celebrity of Gypsy Rose marital support. It should be the other way around, sweetheart. But that's not how our country works, so she'll probably get a little bit of money from Ryan if it's true. If the judge pulls those tax files and finds out how much money he makes, he could be in for a monthly check. And so... While she's filing court documents and trying to get the divorce finalized and get some marital support out of Ryan for these last few days, she's healing from the nose job. And what better way to heal than another trip to the Dollar General? And this is how you know that Gypsy Rose lives in the middle of nowhere. She lives in like one of these middle of nowhere PA regions. I know she doesn't live in PA. I'm pretty sure it's like Mississippi, Louisiana somewhere. But like PA, we have these. There's these towns that have nothing but a, a one grocery store, a post office, and a Dollar General. And that Dollar General is the closest thing to a Walmart or a Target that anyone in that town has for like 10 to 25 to 35 to 50 miles. And like we're not trying to drive 45 minutes just to get a few things. So the Dollar General is a frequent stop for a lot of people in these towns. So Gypsy Rose must live somewhere that doesn't have like a Walmart anywhere near her. So the Dollar General is the next best thing because they just drop those. They just drop those from airplanes. Whenever they see a field, the Dollar General has a cargo plane, like those huge industrial military, like Fast and the Furious five planes that you can fit like tanks on and like multiple vehicles. So what they do is they just fly those up into the air and then they release the door. And whenever they see a big enough field with a big enough range around it, they just drop a Dollar General. Like parking lot, the store, the staff, everything's already in there. Boom, it lands softly and it's open up and it's ready to go. And then they fly for like 10, 15, 20 more miles, and then boom, they'll drop another one because there's nothing that way and there's nothing that way in the state of Pennsylvania and pretty much all down the East Coast. And so, you know what I mean? They just put these Dollar Generals anywhere. They drop them out of planes. It's kind of crazy how they do it. It's a great franchising model, but, you know, it's uh, it's you know, it's the Dollar General. So, you know, she's she's got the nose job. She's recovering. She wants alimony support from Ryan. Have we seen Ryan? Has anyone checked in on him, dude? Has anyone checked in on freaking Ryan? All this news, all this news is surrounding Gypsy. All the news is surrounding her and the ex and her nose job and what Gypsy's doing and Gypsy's deal and where's Gypsy at and Gypsy, Gypsy, Gypsy. No one's ever taken a second to think about where Ryan might be in all this, on how he might feel, on how he's doing. 
Well, guess what? We did. We reached out and we asked him. And this is what he had to say. Hey, everybody. I just want to say thank you all for the support and the and the nice messages I've been getting from people. Uh, I'm out of friends watching wrestling live from right Sunnyvale now. Trailer great. Park. <laughs> Enjoying it. You know, I've been a wrestling nerd for a long time. Uh, but I need to shave. But, um, you know, I just want to thank everybody for the support. It's been great. Uh, I'm just living my life, guys. Uh, y'all will see yeah. what really it's happened just, on Lifetime. It's, it's actually insane. He's just still plugging. He's plugging the show. Oh, it's so sad. The man is so broken. Well, at least... He can go and drink like 30 Bud Lights with his buddy and his double wide and know that like WrestleMania was kick ass. Jake Paul was there. Logan Paul, I mean, was there. Prime Bottle, KSI, freaking Undertaker came back. The Rock, like the whole WrestleMania event was crazy. So I'm sure that Ryan and his buddies had a blast and then they all banged each other and it was fun and they had so much fun like they used to when they were kids when wrestlemania would come on then they'd all get naked and wrestle around the room together and it was one of the greatest times he's ever had all the comments all the comments by the way loving loving single ryan listen ryan for the bachelor we'll get to it in a minute but like you know you and the fire d are gonna find the right girl you can see the hurt in his eyes. Spill the tea on Gypsy. I think you dodged a bullet, sir. Live your life, Ryan. Uh, listen, like, <laughs> they just, they're, it's all support for Ryan Anderson because Gypsy Rose is on a rampage. She's on a rampage. She's out here getting crazy tattoos, not fake ones like JoJo Siwa, but she's getting fake tattoos, she's with exes, she's getting crazy, and Ryan's just trying to watch WrestleMania with his boys, okay? So let's leave him in peace, let's try not to take any more of his money, and let's just leave Ryan alone, okay? It's, it's so, it's so silly, it's so silly, and I mean, even ever, it's, I guess it's divorce season, it's like, it's, it's now, of course, the goal. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you imagine that till death do us part wasn't quite long enough for the golden bachelor? Okay, now we've got these two yahoos out and about claiming that they're, uh, you know, we're, we're getting a separation. Of course, what'd you expect? We have received so much love and support from so many people. Look how who little her face moves when she talks. And I don't think we can tell you how oh, many people wow. told us that it gave them so much hope. We want none of that to change for anybody. Teresa and I have had uh. a number of heart-to-heart -heart conversations, and we've looked closely at our situation, our living situation, and so day. forth. And and what we've kind of come to the conclusion Everyone. mutually. Mm -hmm that it's probably time for us. Everyone, everyone, everyone's, everyone's splitting up. Everyone's splitting up. You know what I mean? It's split so donezo. It's split so donezo for a lot of people. It's crazy. I mean, listen, when do you think The Bachelor, like, do you think if they get to the end of a season of A Bachelor and like they actually get married and they're married for at least 24 hours, if The Bachelor and Bachelorette, if they get married at the end of the season for at least 24 hours, does the studio, do they call that a win? Does the network call that a win? Whether it lasts beyond that or not, like what's the cutoff point for a successful season? Because like we're on season 84 of The Bachelor, not to mention seasons of like spinoffs. We've got The Golden Bachelor, Bachelor Island, F Boy Bachelor, Lovers and Liars. Like the there's 1800 different Nick Lachey hosted love shows. Perfect match. You're the one. Single ready to mingle. Just so many F Girl Island love reality TV shows that promises two individuals love forever. Love together 
And ever and forever, you're here to find the one, you're here to find your boo, you're here to find someone you can be with. And 99.9% .9 of the time, they never end up together. There's maybe 1% of couples that actually have been and stayed together when it comes to reality TV. Yeah, Love is Blind can flaunt that they have one, two, three, four, five couples over the span of like six seasons that are still married. That's fine and dandy, but like, let's give it 10 more years and see where they're all at then, Nick. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's just, what do we expect when we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again? The formula hasn't changed. The outcome hasn't changed. It's a divorce. It's a split. It's a scandal. It's a, he had a girlfriend the whole time. She cheated on him. Like he wasn't ready. He lied to her. They watched the show together. They changed their ways. They changed their feelings. And now they're not together. The reunions suck. There's so many things that like go wrong off camera after the show that contribute to these breakups, the divorces, the heartbreaking announcement. Can you believe it? After millions and millions and millions of ad dollars, your dollars, your time, your spent, your, the network, the production, the editing, the flights, the people, the food, the stage, the sound, the lights, everything that goes into curating a complete 28 to 23 episode season of a show like The Bachelor or The Golden Bachelor or The Love is Blind or whatever it is that you're watching that promises that two or three people will eventually find the one for them. And when it's all said and done, we're let down with people left at the altar, with people breaking up, no one's still together. And it's all just drama that we watched unfold on TikTok live in the moment. And now you're recapping on the reunion four weeks later, because that's how long the production process takes. It just doesn't make sense anymore. The model, the outcome, it doesn't make sense, but we're going to continue to do it because companies and big pharmaceuticals and the car manufacturers and the Coca-Colas of the world are spending millions of dollars in ad space because they know that millions of eyeballs are watching every week to see if Jessica picks Tony or Jacob. And we know a little bit about Jacob and we know a little bit about Tony and we're kind of split on who we think she's going to go for. But if she chooses Jacob we know it's going to be a steady life for them. We know that they're going to grow old together. They're going to have kids. They're going to have the ranch. They're going to have everything that they talked about on the show for the last, we spent the last 24 hours. We spent so much time getting to know these people, the ins and outs of their lives, following them on Instagram, trying to get any more information that the show might not be giving us, reading every article to try to figure out who they're going to choose. But if she chooses Tony, you know, like they're going to go on vacation. They're going to travel. They're going to have that eccentric life with like, you know what I mean? But she wants kids, but he doesn't. But like, that's not a deal breaker for her because she likes to travel too. And like, it's going to be a thing. And so we don't know who she's going to pick. And then when she does at the end of the day, it was ultimately the wrong choice. And now here we are with episode season 74 of the bachelorette because she just got dumped by the guy who was on the last season. So now they're bringing back the guy from the season before to be the next guy on it. And then we'll just keep that cycle going and ABC renews it for another 19 seasons. And it just is the most insane thing that we have in this country is for people to believe that finding the one forever for them is to get in front of a camera and millions of people and expose yourself in ways you never thought you did before because you don't think about it. After three days, the cameras become a mirage. The cameras become an illusion, and then you start living your life normal, and then you're on a show. 
and then everyone knows you and then all your secrets come out and then it's a reality thing. And then you don't really actually love that person because it was the height of the moment, adrenaline. And guess what? Every single one of these shows is pumping alcohol into the air ducts. If you're not drinking, you're breathing it. If you're not breathing it, you're drinking. And if you're not drinking, you're eliminated. And it's essentially how the way of most of these shows go. And so that's where we're at. And that's what happens in America. And so for people to think that that's where you find love, I'm sorry, but you're sadly mistaken. It's not going to happen on F Girl Island. And so <laughs> that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, you know what I mean? That's pretty much where we're at. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another amazing episode of the, what are we doing podcast? Thank you guys so much for rocking with me this far episode 136. Whoa, 137 is coming. We might be having lows back. Like we might have so much stuff. We've got so much stuff planned. Carlos and I are three year anniversaries here. I'm pretty sure it's today is like my three year. I think we posted the podcast. When did we post the podcast? When did we post the podcast? Let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Here we go. Oldest episode one came out on April 23rd. It's April 12th. So next week, next week will be our three year anniversary episode. I don't know what I'm going to do. We might have something planned. I might have something planned. Maybe we'll get Meg's back on the pod. Maybe not. She hates it. I know she does. She tells me she loves it all the time, but she hates it. It's fine. No, I get it. So listen, uh, dude, the first episode of the pod launched almost three years ago. Thank you guys so much for rocking with me. I can't wait for our episode next week. And if you haven't done so already, if you need uh, that perfect gift for uh, that man or special someone or special woman in your life, please check the links below. Get them some blue chew if they've got something swinging, ding a lingin'. Get them a dude robe, no matter what gender they identify as. And get them a gel blaster. It's the perfect Christmas, holiday, birthday present. We're nowhere near Christmas, but it's never too early to shop. If you need to get someone a complete package, if you love this person, get them a gel blaster, get them a dude robe, get them some blue chew if it fits and you've got the perfect trifecta of gifts. If you don't need the blue chew, you figure something else out. Get them a gift card. That'll be great. And they'll love you forever. And you can do all those things using the link in the description down below, wadpod.com backslash links for everything that you need to follow, subscribe, and support this podcast. Click the link, support our friends. Check out the 280 Plus podcast. Check out Felix, the Journeyman Chronicles. And he just released uh, a second podcast um, uh, on his network. Let me get you the name of that. His uh, name is, what is the name of Felix's new podcast, dude? I want to say it right. I want to say it right. I want to say it right. Private Memoirs of a Desperate Man. Uh, he said he wanted to start his network. He's doing it. He's got a second show now. Check out Felix. Check out Journeyman Chronicles. Check out Private Memoirs of a, of a Secret Man uh, podcast uh, from our friend, a Desperate Man, I'm sorry. De Private Memoirs of a Desperate Man podcast. Check it out. Um, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Levi McCurdy. I will catch you guys next week. Thank you so much for the support. Our subscribers are through the roof. We're going up. We're going to hit that 1500 like next week. We might hit 1500 by our three year anniversary and that would be insane. So shout out to you guys. I know we're still a small channel. We're coming for you, Mr. Beast. Look out, Jimmy. I need you to have me in one of your videos so we can boost the numbers. We can boost them up together. We can both be at like that 200, 300 million spot. Let's do it. Let's go. Shout out to you guys. This has been another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. Peace out, everybody. This is the What Are We Doing podcast.